Hello everyone. So today I am just turning on the camera and I'm going to bring you along as I make uh, the applique portions for this quilt. We are appliquing three names onto fabric blocks that you see me cutting out here. And we are using the embroidery machine to do that. So we're going to just start off by cutting the fabric backgrounds for these three name blocks. I want them to be eight and a half inches tall and then two of them will be 16 and a half inches long and the green one will be let's see 18 and a half inches long so here you'll see I just turned on my camera and I'm cutting out the backgrounds for my name blocks I thought it would just be fun to bring you along and share my day with you. We are going to be making the Marcus block together and then I'll finish the other two off camera. And then I do have a question from Mary, so we're gonna go over Mary's question at the very end of this video. So you'll see here, I am going to be using Heat and Bond Light for the back side of my pink fabric, which I'll be using as the letters on my name blocks. Now I'm going to prepare the pink fabric strips. I'm going to be using my brother's scan and cut to cut out the letters for these blocks. If you'd like to see a video on how I created my letters as a cutting file or as an embroidery file, I'm going to link a video in the description box below that will show you how I did that. And I feel like I'm going to say that a lot in this video because we're just going to go through all of the motions. But several different techniques I'm using today, I have videos for, and so I will link them all in the description box below. Including a video if you've never seen how to use a brother scan and cut to cut out your applique, you'll find a link in the description box. <laughs> For me, it saves so much time. Uh, there's so many different ways you can do applique with your embroidery machine. I like to go ahead and cut out my letters a little bit bigger than uh, the placement stitch of my embroidery. And so that's what we are doing for these blocks. And it took less than uh, three minutes to cut out all of these letters. <laughs> so it's really a time saver. I'm just cutting out the letters. And now comes what I think is the most satisfying part of that whole process is revealing all of our cuts, all of our finished letters. Maybe I'm just weird like that, but I love to watch this part of the process. <laughs> so I've used some masking tape just to make sure that my fabric stays in place. This is the very first mat I ever purchased, and it is hardly tacky at all. But I kind of like that because the letters, for the most part, release off the mat pretty easily. Every once in a while, like this letter S, uh, wants to stay on the mat, but this standard mat I've used so much that it's sort of turned into like a low tack mat. <laughs> See, isn't that fun to reveal all of the letters? <laughs> that might just be me. So once I have all of my letters, we're going to do a little preview of what the Marcus block is going to look like. I think the color combination of green and pink is so pretty. And this is my preview. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I've prepared my hoop. I'm going to link a video if you've never seen how you create a window, a stabilizer window. Go check out that video. It saves so much time and materials. 
So I have my fabric prepared in the hoop and the next thing we're going to do is move over to the embroidery machine. From Embrilliance you can print off uh, your embroidery and it gives you center lines both vertically and horizontally and so you can place that into the center of your fabric and make sure that everything is centered. And one of the things that I love about the Bernina B700 is it has a feature called pinpoint placement. So I can move my needle over to the center of my embroidery and set in those settings. And I don't have to worry so much about making sure my fabric is really centered in the hoop. So I love that feature about this embroidery machine. So once I, once I have all of those settings in the machine, and that's what I'm doing here, I'm ready to remove this little template, and we are going to do the position stitch, the very first stitch to show where we are placing all of our letters. So on the back side of my hoop, I do have a cutaway stabilizer, a lightweight cut cutaway, and then I am uh, what we call floating a tearaway stabilizer underneath the hoop. I think it just adds another layer of stabilization and helps my stitches stay nice and flat and pretty. So we'll watch the machine as it does the placement stitch. And there, I think that's better with the light turned off. You might be able to see it a little bit better. Once this is done, we're going to remove the hoop and cut our jump stitches and we can fuse in place our letters that we cut with the Brother Scan and Cut. Now I cut my letters out with an inflation of a 2.3 and I think really that that might have been too much. I think next time I will reduce the amount that I inflate or increase the size of my letters. Because you'll notice in this A, it inflated it so much that there's a section I will have to go back and cut out. Right above the little loopity hole, <laughs> there's a section that it filled it all in because I inflated it a tad bit too much. Each project is so different uh, that usually the same settings that you used the last project may or may not work for your next project. So that's something from like a reminder to myself. <laughs> Once the letters are fused into place, we can return the hoop to the machine and it's going to do my tack down stitch. Now because we inflated the letters, the tack down stitch will uh, secure the fabric. All of our applique will be sewn down with the tack down stitch. And we will go through that together. And then once that's done, we're ready to start the satin stitch. So I cut away all of my jump stitches and I'm returning the hoop back to the machine. The very first thing it's going to do is an underlay for the satin stitch and that just really supports the density of our satin stitch. So I'm just going to let you follow along. We'll move you in a little bit closer so that you can see how the machine adds an underlay for the satin stitch. And then we will do the satin stitch for the letter M. This whole process took about, let's see, I think it was 33 minutes for the machine to do the complete name. So we're just going to focus on the letter M together in this video. <laughs> Now I do think that in the time it took me to 
digitize the name and then for the machine to stitch it out I might have been able to do it faster on my regular sewing machine but my satin stitch is not as pretty and as precise as what the embroidery machine does and so I think uh, for some projects like this it is totally worth the time and for the most part I like to sit and watch the machine. <laughs> it seems if I ever walk away from the machine, something funny happens, and so I do sit and watch it. But technically, you're supposed to be able to set it and walk away and do something else. <laughs> so it's supposed to be a time saver. So here we are with our finished embroidery. I'm ready to remove this from the hoop. Let's cut the jump stitches first. And then you'll see my process for removing the fabric from the hoop. And I will be able to reuse this window in the hoop for the other two blocks as well. So that's pretty awesome. Again, if you'd like to see how I create the stabilizer window, that video will be in the description box below. So I'm going to remove the tearaway stabilizer. Sometimes it's easier if you cut those jump stitches. And this just tears away from the back side. And then you'll see the cutaway stabilizer. I'm going to leave that, but I'm going to trim it down closer to the embroidery. I'll loosen that up from the back side of my stabilizer window and then flip it over and gently remove the front fabric away from the window. I have just used a simple glue stick to uh, stabilize my fabric in the hoop. It all comes out very easy. And there's our finished block. Now I'm just going to really quick go through and cut away the excess of the cutaway stabilizer. And then and this block will be done. I'm going to put this up on the wall and move on to the other two blocks this afternoon. I'm also going to go in side the letters and remove the cutaway or no, sorry, the tearaway stabilizer that's still left inside each one of these letters because uh, if you don't do that it adds a little bit of stiffness and that pulls away pretty easily. Again, that is just the tearaway stabilizer that we removed at the very beginning. It stays within inside all of these letters. So I'm just going to pull that out real quick. Sometimes I enjoy this process and then sometimes I'm like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. <laughs> I guess it depends on uh, my creative mood for the day. Am I the only one who is like that? <laughs> sometimes you enjoy something today and tomorrow it's more like uh, a chore. Again, maybe that's just me. <laughs> so here's our finished block. This is what it looks like. I'm going to give it a quick press before I put it up on the wall. But I think that turned out so fantastic. And that blue thread is going to coordinate with this fabric. That is so awesome. Let's take a look at Mary's question. Before we go for today, I had a question from Mary. Her question is right here. And can we talk about the difference between 
uh, partial seams and open seams. And Mary, really there is no difference. I just use the term open seams uh, when I have a larger chunk up on the wall and part of it is still left open and not finished. So right here we have a partial seam. There will be a partial seam as we join these sections together around this little tiny orange piece. An open seam is also a partial seam, but it's what I call these pieces that are in a large chunks and that the seam is still partially open, waiting to be joined uh, as we join these larger sections. So let me move you up to the wall so you can actually see what this looks like. The funny thing is, I don't even know if open seam is a technical sewing term. <laughs> They're all partial seams. But when I refer to something being an open seam, again, it's still a partial seam, but the section that I was just pointing to on my grid, that is this section here, and there is a section uh, right below it. So see this seam right here? This is where I started sewing and this part is still open or left unfinished. To finish this, I'm going to join this section here together and then, let's see, that will go together. Yes, that will go together and then I can finish this seam here. So this is what I'm talking about when I say open seam. Still a partial seam, but it's a larger chunk that has a seam that's still left open. <laughs> I hope that makes sense, Mary. And if not, jump down to the comments section and we'll walk through it a little bit more. Um, but I'm hoping that that maybe clears up open seams and partial seams for you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.